Hiya. Welcome to the Garden Whisperer. I'm Ed, and this little guy you see he is CK. <coughs> my trusted gardening helper. Today, we're setting our sights on Alabama's lush and bountiful native plants. This southern belle of a state is home to over 4,000 native and non-native plant species. Just imagine trying to fit all of that into a single video. Poor CK would surely miss his daily walk. But worry not, as we will be focusing on a delightful selection of flowers, grasses, trees, vines, and shrubs from the heart of Dixie. Why the fuss about native plants? Simply put, they are perfect partners to their environment and have adapted over thousands of years to provide critical sustenance for local insects and wildlife. Cultivating them could mean the difference between preserving our natural wonders and losing them forever. But on a happier note, a quick reminder to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell for more botanical wonders. Now, let's dig in. Let's start with native flowers of Alabama. These are the showstoppers, the divas of the plant world, and boy, do they know how to put on a performance. Starting with the bell of the ball, the camellia flower, Alabama's state flower. You might have thought that these flamboyant blooms were natives, but guess what? They were cultivated from China in the early 19th century. These beauties put on their grand spectacle mainly in winter and spring, with blooms in white, pink, red and yellow. Fun fact, in the 1800s in Alabama, having a camellia in your yard was like owning a Rolex watch. The pinnacle of luxury. Eat the rich, am I right? Next up, meet the common cattail. With wand-like stems and fuzzy sausage-shaped flowers, these aquatic dwellers are iconic symbols of Alabama's wetlands. You might have spotted them in works by famous Southern Gothic writers like Hopperley and Zora Neale Hurston. Fun fact, their name comes from the fuzzy brown flower which looks similar to, you guessed it, a cattail. Our next star is the annual phlox, a common yet delightful annual flower. Known for their star shape and delicate fragrance, they draw in pollinators with their charming blooms in purple, pink, red, and white. Fun fact, they are like nature's crack for hummingbirds. So, if you fancy seeing more hummingbirds in your garden, planting some phlox is a good place to start. Up next is a fan favorite of the butterflies, the Michaud milkweed. This perennial produces clusters of white flowers in late spring and summer that are irresistible to monarch butterflies. Fun fact, it's named after the milky latex-like substance that exudes from its stems. What's that lovely smell you ask? It's the delightful lemon fragrance from the Alabama azalea. These pure white flowers come with a large splash of yellow and can be found on shrubs that grow up to 12 feet tall. Unfortunately, these beautiful blooms are becoming uncommon due to modern forestry practices and developments. A less than cheerful fact there, but hopefully, we can change that through our gardening choices. Next on our list is the Adamasco lily, or rain lily. These flowers come to life at the start of summer and are commonly known as Easter lilies. With a funnel-shaped, white flower slightly tinged with violet or pink, these lilies are a sight to behold. Fun fact, the genus name is a nod to Zephyrus of Greek mythology, the husband of Chloris, goddess of flowers. The species name is derived from a Powhatan word meaning stained with red. Now, meet the blazing star, a seemingly simple stemmed plant with tall, thistle-like flowers that truly steal the show. They sprout from narrow pal-like blooms and can be found in pink, white, and purple. Fun fact, it's a fantastic companion plant, acting as a deterrent to hungry deer. Next up is the bloodroot, a fleshy plant that often hides under leaf litter. Like the walking dead, these plants rise up creepily from under leafy brush. Fun fact, its name comes from the red sap that oozes from the stems when cut, giving it a somewhat eerie quality. As summer begins, the nodding onion starts to bloom. Despite their southern roots, they are not great fans of hot weather and don't take well to overwatering either. Fun fact, 
While they can substitute for chives, they can also be poisonous and cause severe diarrhea so let's just admire them from afar, shall we? Next on our list is the swamp milkweed, known for its rose pink and pure white flowers. They are a common sight in damp rain gardens, though they still need careful watering in unusually dry seasons. Fun fact, in the 1940s, milkweed seed fibers were used to fill life preservers. Speaking of milkweeds, meet the butterfly weed. Its citrus-colored flowers can adapt to drought-like conditions, but a word of caution when handling the seed pods. Those sticky spurs get everywhere. Fun fact, it takes three years to bloom a single flower. The white wild indigo might look delicate with its tiny pea-shaped blooms, but don't be fooled. These hardy flowers can weather the harshest of conditions, rain or shine. Fun fact, they can grow up to an impressive six feet tall. Now, let's take a walk through the beautiful world of Alabama's native grasses. First on our list is the big blue stem. This tall, elegant ornamental grass is a true hallmark of untamed southern prairies. With its lustrous flower spikes that come to life in late summer, it's a sight locals know and love. Fun fact. There is also a little blue stem variety if you prefer your grass less grand. Next is the split beard blue stem. Come warm spring, its abundant plumes awaken and they are a true spectacle during the summer. Fun fact, despite its beauty, it's an extremely aggressive plant and can overgrow in your garden. So beware gardeners, this one is best enjoyed in the wild. Sometimes, it's the common and familiar things that comforts us most. Like, for example, the common broom sedge. This grass is found in high quantities all over Alabama and the South. It's not just cozy and airy. Many enthusiasts dry out the grass to use as rustic homemade decor. Fun fact. These grasses are used in restoration projects for erosion control. Controlled burns are done seasonally to encourage their growth. Next is the wavy hair grass. This soft, shade-loving grass doesn't lose its luster during the cold season. Its lavender-colored, spike-shaped blooms dance freely in a windswept breeze. Fun fact, with its straw-like texture, it's perfect for creating a fairy-style meadow. Sand spikerush may not reach towering heights like other native plants in Alabama. However, it gracefully stands out with its fine-textured leaves and vibrant color. Also, it can blend in seamlessly with the surrounding lawn grasses. It's a great low-maintenance ground cover for those who prefer a carefree approach to gardening. Fun fact. This plant is also popular in freshwater aquariums. Next up, Virginia Wild Rye. This breezy prairie grass thrives in cooler southern climates and offers easy grazing for birds. Fun fact. It's commonly planted to stabilize ravines and hillsides to prevent dangerous mudslides. Meet the Pennsylvania sedge. Its clump-like tufts of fine grass make it a stylish yet native ground cover alternative. Fun fact, it's an effective no-mow lawn substitute, thanks to its appealingly disheveled appearance. Plus, it stays evergreen, even in the deep Dixie South's high heat. Switch grass may seem unremarkable. But don't be fooled. It's full, hearty, and serves as an excellent food source for livestock. Fun fact, it's also harvested as biofuel due to its natural ethanol content. River oats are known for their golden corpus spikelets in the fall. They love the shade and are popular as an ornamental grass. But be careful, they do seed aggressively. Fun fact, they are named after their common habitat near inland rivers and stream edges. And let's take a look at the adorably named Elliot's Love Grass. Also known as Wild Dancer Grass, Elliot's Love Grass has small purple or beige plumes that tuft liberally from its long stems. Fun fact, it's commonly dispersed by latching onto the fur of passing animals. Next, we have the bold and space-defying Indian grass. It's big, elegantly robust, and common in the southeast. Fun fact, in a bygone era, these grasses were a staple food source for buffalo roaming American prairies. Lastly, we have the St. Augustine grass. This grass is no stranger to Alabama natives. 
It can thrive in the deep south, but it's notorious for browning along flower beds and driveways during winter. Not so fun fact, it's not ideal for footy, as it loses its lush vibrancy very easily from heavy foot traffic. Now, let's explore Alabama's magnificent native trees. First on our list is the historical chalk maple. Famous for its intensely dark red and orange leaves during autumn, this tree can grow to an impressive 30 feet tall. Fun fact, some of these age-old beauties have been standing tall for over 60 years. Next, we have the American holly, a familiar sight across Alabama. Its bright red fruit is a favorite among our feathered friends during the winter. Fun fact, many people often mistake the fruit of the American holly for the festive mistletoe. The lovely red maple is up next. It provides wonderful shade and adds a vibrant touch to any landscape. Just remember, quality matters when buying maple seedlings. Fun fact, some red maples are known to be 150 years old. Talk about standing the test of time. Eastern red cedar is next, and it's renowned for its inviting fragrance. With lacy leaves and richly colored foliage, it's truly a sight to behold in the early fall season. Not so fun fact, its natural oils are highly flammable. Meet the Southern Magnolia, a beloved symbol of the Deep South's plantations. Its relaxed branches and ivory blooms add a regal quality to any yard. Fun fact, instead of bees, it's predominantly beetles that consume its pollen. River birch is next. Recognizable by its unique almond-colored, papery bark, it can grow up to 90 feet. But remember, don't plant them too close to your house due to their large size. Fun fact, its growth shape resembles an upside-down pyramid. Then we have the spruce pine, a dark, verdant tree that flourishes in wild, untamed lands. Fun fact, the wood of a spruce was used in building the Wright brothers' first aircraft. Up next is the graceful yellow wood, cherished for its wide shade and wisteria clusters. Fun fact, it can take 10 years for a single bloom to grow. Eastern redbud, a small tree that makes a big statement, is up next. If you're a fan of tree shade, you'll love this tree as it only takes around two years to become suitable for shade. Fun fact, its pink petals have been used in salads. Now, we'll look at the loblolly pine, commonly used in commercial landscaping. With its dark green needles and red-brown cones, it's a unique addition to the Alabama landscape. Meet the live oak, a living legend not just in Alabama, but also in the south of Georgia. Draped in Spanish moss, this tree is common along beach landscapes. Fun fact, it's a host to a variety of lichens, ferns, and mosses. Lastly, we have the cabbage palmetto, which thrives in quaint, sleepy seashore towns. If you're thinking of adding one to your garden, remember, it's better to plant young ones to avoid environmental damage. Fun fact, it's the state tree for Florida and South Carolina, despite being native to Alabama. It's time to venture into the enchanting realm of Alabama's native vines. Our journey begins with the charming climbing aster. With soft pink blooms, it sprawls in damp conditions and is a common sight in the Gulf Coast wetlands. Fun fact, the aster flower, related to the sunflower, adds a touch of sunshine to this climbing vine. Next up, we have the slender vines of the climbing hydrangea. These vines find their home in twiggy treetops and bloom with white flowers in spring. However, they can be a bit shy, taking time to establish themselves on a trellis. Not so fun fact, keep this vine away from cats, dogs, and horses as it is toxic to them. Now, let's meet the dependable yellow jessamine. Often seen snaking along wire balconies and telephone poles, it showcases its vibrant yellow blooms in March and April. Fun fact, this vine was once used to treat measles, but it was later discovered to be highly toxic. Ah yes, the beloved muscadine. This vine is famous for its delicious grapes, adored by true southerners. Self-fertile and sustainable, it requires no toxic pesticides. Fun fact, muscadine grapes have a thick skin, 
adding a delightful challenge to their consumption. Here comes the familiar Virginia creeper, a climbing vine that's often encountered from a young age. Its signature five leaflets differentiated from the notorious three-leafed poison ivy. Not so fun fact. While it serves as ground cover for watersheds, beware of its berries as they can be fatal if eaten. Now, let's admire the purple passion flower, also known as maypop. These vibrant purple blooms are delicately constructed and are annuals, perishing and regrowing with each season. While commonly found on the ground, they can also be trellised. Fun fact! Catholic priests in the 1500s associated this flower with the last days of Jesus Christ. Last but not least, we have the magnificent American wisteria. With its rich colour, fragrant blooms, and a special place in Alabama's plant life, it stands out. Unlike its more aggressive Asian counterparts, American wisteria is calmer in its sprawling nature. Fun fact! Did you know that wisteria is actually a part of the legume family? Quite fascinating, isn't it? Time to delve into the world of native shrubs that add beauty and charm to Alabama. Our first shrub is the remarkable bottle brush buckeye. This versatile plant can withstand all four seasons and finds its home on woodland borders. Fun fact! The seeds of this shrub are nearly the size of golf balls and the plant itself can grow up to an impressive six feet tall. Prepare to be enchanted by the American Beauty Berry. Fragrant as the finest Parisian perfume, this shrub thrives in shady conditions and is a critical food source for many songbirds. Fun fact, when the berries of the American Beauty Berry are crushed, they act as a natural insect repellent. It's been used under horse harnesses to keep biting bugs at bay. And that concludes our journey through Alabama's native plants. If any of these beauties caught your eye, you can find more information about native and non-native plants in Alabama by visiting the Alabama Plant Atlas at floraofalabama.org and the Alabama Cooperative Extension System at aces.edu. Don't worry. Feel free to take a moment to click the links listed in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell to stay updated on our latest gardening adventures, tips and tricks. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment below and let me know which native plant of Alabama fascinates you the most. As always, happy growing and cheerio!